Then came the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Where do you want us to prepare for it? they asked. He replied, As you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters, and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, all furnished. Make preparations there. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. And so they gathered, excited, ready to celebrate God's provision, God's salvation. Let's come in prayer. Loving Father God, we celebrate with the generations your love, your provision, your protection, your salvation. We celebrate and affirm that you are present in the joys and the heartaches of our lives. That it is in you we find the fullness of meaning, of hope and of joy. We find the strength we need to face the challenges that will come our way. So as we gather on this morning Thursday, we gather in the name of Christ. We gather at the behest of the Spirit. We gather to meet and to be encouraged and empowered by you, God, Creator of all. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So welcome. Welcome to this Thursday night. Welcome to this Maundy service. This time to pause and reflect on that gathering of Jesus with his friends. That coming together to celebrate a God who keeps his people safe and holy. Let's sing. I lift my eyes up to the mountain From where my help will surely come For my help comes from the Creator Who made the earth and stars and sun The Lord will keep shade when day is bright the sun won't burn me with its glory nor will the moon in dark night the Lord will keep me from all evil with all the
the sun won't burn me with its glory, nor will the moon in dark of night. So it's Passover. And as they would have done before, they gather to celebrate the festival, to cast their minds back to Egypt and the night of deliverance, to embrace the meal and its significance and, and its ritual. It's about remembering. It's about embracing. It's about taking what was and living it in what is. One of the common parts of the gathering was to recline at the table. And to recline at the table is not just to sit in relaxedness. It is actually a declaration that we are at peace and God will provide. When we recline at the table, we are doing the opposite of one who is ready for war, of one who is about to run for their life. The Passover meal says within it, God has saved the people and God will save the people. The act of reclining is saying we are safe in that space. And it is actually an act of rebellion at this moment in time against Roman and Herodian rule. Because the Romans said they ran the show. And when the people of God relax at the table, they go, you know what, we're not scared of you, Romans. We're not scared of you, Herod and your henchmen. For we trust in a God who defeated Pharaoh and will save us again. And so they're at table, bread and there's wine. Jesus takes the bread from the table and says, check it out, boys. Bread, body, mine, given for you. When you come to the table and there's bread, break it, share it, and remember who I've been. Remember what I've done. And remember what I've promised, to be with you to the end of the age. And then, leaving them with those thoughts, the meal continues. And at last, Jesus takes the cup from the table. And perhaps in this moment, he takes the cup, the ceremonial cup of the future salvation. The cup of Elijah that is not drunk but is there to remind us that God will save us in the future. Just as God saved them back then, God will save us. And Jesus takes the cup and he says, see this, this is the covenant between God and humanity sealed in my blood. Drink it in memory of me. Paul, some years later, writes to the church in Corinth. We find it in 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 26. It says, this is what I hand on to you. What was handed on to me by, by the Lord, by Jesus himself. And the narrative goes on. On the night he was betrayed, he took a cup, uh, took bread and having given thanks, he broke it and offered it to them. And then he took the cup and again, having given thanks, he offered it to them. And then Paul says something really important. Paul says, examine yourself. Examine not whether we are worthy of coming to the table. Because our coming to the table is by invitation of Jesus. By command of Jesus. It's not about examining whether we deserve to share in this. What Paul is saying is, are you coming with a good heart? Are you coming because you want to meet Jesus in this moment? Are you coming because you have a heart of gratitude and thanksgiving in this moment? 
and our response our response sometimes is no i'm just coming out of habit our response sometimes is yeah i know it's amazing that god in god's wisdom jesus in god's grace would invite me so examine yourselves is the word of paul to us all jesus takes a tradition a long-standing tradition a ceremony a ritual that is focused on remembering the god story and our place in it as a saved people and he adds a twist he adds me when we think of the words of jesus it is finished he is coming to the Passover and he is completing the meaning of the Passover because salvation is ours in him. He takes the yog with grace and love. He works it into something renewed, something that gives life and grows life. Let's pray. Loving Father God, we thank you for the gift of the table, for this opportunity we are given to pause and to remember. And so we pray, Lord God, that by your spirit, you would challenge us again and again to be deliberate in our remembering, that we might be empowered for our living, not in our own strength, but in yours with hearts that are grateful. And with an attitude of humility. In Jesus' name, amen. As we remember what Jesus is, has, and will do. Let's sing.
And so as they gather for the meal, a ritual, a cleanliness ritual, not a, a ritual of supreme religious importance, but an honest ritual of hospitality, of honouring guests is enacted. From the dusty streets of Palestine, the feet are washed. And in this case, it is Jesus who is playing host and the disciples that are his guests. And that already, we can see, starts to reverse the narrative. Because as disciples of their rabbi, their guru, their teacher, they should be caring for him. But as he has always done, he turns that on its head because he is caring for them. And Peter, wonderful Peter, he tries to, to argue the toss, not get it. And this is the point. That whilst to wash our feet when we come inside is a good thing. It's a worthwhile ritual. We don't need to turn it into more than it is. And I wonder how many times in the life of the church we've taken things like the table and turned it into more than it is. We've added fancy cups and, and arguments over the elements and who can touch them and give them and take them. And, you know, in the medieval church, it got to the point where the only person allowed to have communion was the priest. It's like, that's mad. Jesus didn't say, when you priests stand in front of the people, he said, when you gather as the church. It's simple. It's basic. But what Paul says is, don't trivialize it. When Jesus offers to wash the feet, he says, this is important. This is a ritual that shows hospitality. And when Jesus does it, it shows the place of holy humility. Humility grounded not in a lack of self-worth, but in a deep understanding of a person's value as a child of God. This is the way of Jesus. To love and to serve. To embrace ritual, not for ritual's sake, but so that others are blessed. And so there is no need to wash all of Peter's being because that's not the point. Though Peter is right in believing that, uh, in a sense, he is so unclean he shouldn't even be there. And what Jesus is saying, it's not about that, mate. You're invited. We need to remember all the time that it's not us that thought the church was a good idea. It's not us that thought gathering in the name of Jesus was a good idea. We do it because he did it. And he, Jesus Christ, the crucified and risen one, calls us to it. And so, Jesus washes the feet. It's an act service, an act of love, an act of worship. For in honouring them, he honours the Father. And he prepares them all for the journey to come. Let's pray. Loving Father God, Help us to understand the importance of holy humility, of service, of loving and being loved, of the way of Jesus and the needs in this hurting world. We offer ourselves at this time 
as a living sacrifice. An act of worship to you, our holy God. Receive us and use us that your good news might come to all people in this Easter season. That all people might come to know the beauty, the life-giving truth of Jesus, the one who dies and rises, that we might know life. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's continue in song with If There Was Ever a Time. in love today save us from our enemies we will know we're safe it's time to trust your strong hand our desperate need is to hear your voice it's time for eyes that see what you see then we will pray for the world you love today church has the task to pray. People of the world are in pain. The church has the task to pray. People of the world are in pain. The church has the task to pray. If there was ever a time that we needed your eyes to see the world you see, now is the time we look to you. Give us your heart for all Bring us low We will know to pray It's time to trust your strong hand Our desperate need is to hear your voice It's time for eyes that see what you see Then we will pray So, as they sat, they talked, they ate, they drank, and they prayed. Let's pray. Loving Father God, we need you now. Our world needs you now. As we remember that last meal, and the conversations about betrayal, the predictions of abandonment, the hurt, the genuine sense of hurt that was on the hearts of those that were there, the confusion in that space. Only you can make sense of our world. So help us, Lord God, in your grace to make sense of our world and to respond in compassion. Help us to be hands and feet, to be instruments of your love. Lord, we pray this day for all believers, for all who are seeking to understand, to make sense and to integrate you, Lord Jesus, in our lives. May we have the humility to pause, to listen, to serve, and to give thanks. May we have the courage to allow you, Holy Spirit, to challenge our sacred cows, to allow you, Holy Spirit, to lead us in paths unknown. May we have the grace 
to forgive others and to forgive ourselves as we seek to make a difference in the world. Lord, as your kingdom comes near, your mission unfolds, we pray for all who are hurting, in sickness and in death, in grief and despair, in confusion and fear. Lord, bring a new day. Bring a dawn of hope and peace, joy and love. Bring your kingdom near. In Jesus' name, amen. And so the scripture says at the end of the meal, they sang a song together. Let's sing. They went to the garden one less than before He tried to prepare them for what was in store Maybe they suspected and maybe they guessed The soldiers were coming to make their arrest They went to the garden, they sang an old song Last orders were over, last supper was gone We hear how it happened again and again Do we try to step back from now into then? How would we have acted? What would we have said? Would we have been Peter or Judas instead? Each one by the fire just warming our hands We hear ourselves saying I don't know the man They went to the garden, how could they have known We'd still tell the story two thousand years on They said they'd defend him, they promised to stay But sleep overcame good intentions that day They went to the garden, of course he was scared He knew death was coming, he prayed to be spared Betrayed for some money that never got spent No angels to save him from Pilate's consent And though he would never have done it this way God reclaimed the world from the devil that day They went to the garden the day had begun When evil was beaten and goodness had won Oh Jesus, we act as if nothing has changed Like heaven and earth haven't been rearranged Pretend that we're better and bigger and more We seem to forget no one's keeping the score Help us to love bolder and freer like you To see and to hear and to speak and to do May all that you've given us keep coming through Goodbye to the old world Hello to the new The Easter journey continues. It continues to the garden, to the act of betrayal, the moment of arrest, a kangaroo court. The journey goes on and so does ours. So let us step out wherever he leads, doing whatever he commands, loving those he places before us, trusting to the gift of the Holy Spirit, 
for wisdom and for strength. And may all we do bring glory to the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and may your Easter be a blessed one. Spirit God, to you we pray for the healing of the nations. Within this space, extend your grace for the healing of our neighbors. Love and to Russia. shape of a cross O oh, Spirit God to you we pray for the healing of the nations within this space extend your grace for the healing of our neighbors love and terror marvelous refrain silently say In the shape of a cross In the shape of a cross